Well, our next guest is one half of Australia's most famous television duo, and we woke up with her for over a decade on the Seven Network's Sunrise. Melissa Doyle has been on our screens for 30 years and is easily one of the best broadcasters this country has ever produced. It thrills me to say this. Melissa Doyle, welcome to the Ben Robin Robbo Show. Hey. <laughs> it's so nice to join you. Good to see you. How are you? Oh, it's wonderful to see you. I I'm so excited. We're all so excited. Um, I like to start my interviews a little differently, uh, Melissa Doyle. Uh, what did you have for your tea last night? David Robinson, that's very formal. Um, <laughs> pork chop and salad and roast pumpkin. Oh, that, that sounds very, I like very, very nice. Tea. Actually, yeah, I like tea. I like tea. It just makes me feel more Australian a bit. Uh, Mel, we do have to stop you there. We've got some breaking news coming in from a past update. Uh, we're going to take that to you now. Good evening. The 1991 Canberra Asanda Rally has been won by West Australian Ross Dunkerton. It's his third consecutive title, making him the undisputed king of the forest. A Bulleye man was this afternoon airlifted from Bungonia Gorge near Talong after injuring his ankle while bushwalking. He was treated by ambulance officers before being transported to Goulburn Hospital. More local news. <laughs> uh, Melissa Dollar there with that very important update. Yeah. And she was trying to sound very grown up and proper. Clearly, I was in my early 20s and trying to sound um, like I knew what I was talking about, you know, when you put the news reader voice on. And then, then you yeah. get to a point in your career where you just can't sustain it. So that just ends and then you just speak normally. So, yeah. <laughs> uh, when I came across that and I found that, I thought, oh, that has got to go in. Um, I, I'm assuming with that hair, Mel, that you couldn't go near a naked flame? A lot of hairspray? <laughs> It's beautifully quaffed in the clip-on earrings and look at screams, you know, 1993 or whatever it was. So, um, oh, it was yeah, wonderful. Well, well, tell us, with, <laughs> with, with news, what, how is it different now to what it was then? What was it like to work in an Australian newsroom uh, back, in, back in those days? I think essentially it's the same. It's the same concept where they're doing breaking news you work all day for to put a story together and either bring it to air at night or whether it's in the morning i think the main difference now is the news cycle just goes a lot faster you know because you get yeah. people get their news all day every day from so many different sources so you know whether you're getting it on tv whether you're reading it whether you're getting it on your phone your devices whatever it just the news cycle itself i think goes a lot faster back then without wanting to age myself too much but um, you, you know, most people would be at work all day and you'd come home and you'd watch the news at 6 p.m. And that was the first time all day you'd heard what had happened within the last sort of 12 hours or so. So I think that's the main change. But essentially what we do is the same. You gather news, you spend the day making sure that you've got everything covered, that it's accurate, and, and you present it at night. Mel, did you always know that you wanted to do this? Yeah, I did actually. I think that makes it a bit easier. Um, yeah, I think I remember being about eight and wanting to be an astronaut and realising that probably wasn't going to happen. Um, but no, I, I just loved, I was that kid that would, you know, sit up and write stories all the time and just that curiosity, I think. So probably from about 12, I reckon, I knew I wanted to be a journalist. And I do remember being... Um, at school and I would take myself off to anywhere that would have me for work experience. So going to the Manly Daily and doing the, you know, the graveyard shift on 2UE and hanging in newsrooms, anywhere that would have me so that I could decide. I loved broadcast journalism because I wanted to see it. And I knew that in order to be a print journalist, I thought I didn't think I was a good enough writer. I love when I read someone's beautiful writing and I just admire the way they have a turn of phrase. It's so clever. And I knew that I probably wasn't going to be that good. So um, TV just, just had me. I just want to see the pictures. Well, do you know, uh, I hope you don't mind me saying this. There was a one moment that I've always remembered uh, where you told me once that you're a terrible speller. And I thought, oh, thank <laughs> God, because so am I. And maybe I've got a career ahead of this. I hope you don't mind me saying that. But I thought, oh, that was very no, powerful because I don't know how to spell. Yeah, neither do I. Yeah. No. But yeah. There's Sorry. No. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's, that's exactly right. Um, you quickly rose to the ranks uh, at seven after some time with Prime and Win. You even presented the news on the iconic 11am. 
Uh, do you miss shows like that or or have they gone forever? Is, is that just something that we we relegate to the past? Oh, no. I mean, I think, you know, we've, we've got the morning show in that time slot. There's always shows that television evolves just like every other industry and things but it was a fantastic you know we had Andrew Daddo and Anne Fullwood and they were hosting and I'd read the news the only thing I must say that's changed is so I used to have like a little um sort of a timber stand-up desk and because mm -hmm. I had to be hardwired to it with my microphone and my earpiece I would have to walk across the set while the camera was on Anne and Andrew and put my little <laughs> desk down stand there and read the news and then when I'd finish I'd walk off so I think we probably got a slightly fancier set but <laughs> at our core, what we do is essentially the same as it has been for a very long time things look a little different be they hair and wardrobe and earrings or sets or monitors the other day actually in the office we were watching um, a news bulletin from gosh I don't know it must be 30, 40 years ago maybe, and um, and the monitors they had were these little tiny, tiny little screens. And you realise how much technology has improved what we do, but at the core of it, it is still the same. It's it's information, it's exactly what you do, information, it's topics for conversation, it's issues that we need to know about, that we want to talk about, it's giving people something to think about, it's looking at something in a different way and, and you know, maybe you can come away from watching an issue covered and, and have a different perspective, but essentially it's still the same that we, the same things we've always done. Mm. Which is so good. And it, it's so lovely, obviously, to have someone like you who we've, we've seen on our screens. We're familiar. We know that we can trust you and we know that you're going to give us, you know, the best information. So I think that's, a, that's a wonderful thing. Uh, forgive me though. Just, I'm going to indulge I, myself. Yes. <laughs> but it's not me. It's, uh, it's an entire newsroom. You know, I just want to make sure. Oh yeah, of course, like of course, of course. Yeah. I just feel like we've got, you know, the, it, we're all driven by that need for accuracy to cover it to cover it right to to get it right and and especially at this mm. time more than ever i think it's really important but anyway sorry i'll be quiet now your turn <laughs> no, it's fine. But 100% yes. There's, 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 there's plenty of people that support you, but you are the face. And, and, and we, it, it, no, just from my personal experience, uh, when I see you on the telly, when something's big happening, I just know that I'm in safe hands. Obviously, there's a lot of people supporting you, but it, it's, it's the way that you deliver it. It's the, uh, the compassion that you have. Uh, is is what makes I, I think so many people love and adore you. We'll talk about that admiration in a moment, but I'm going to indulge myself now for a second. Now, uh, my first job in television was with you. Uh, I spent two years at Sunrise, uh, and we only got to share the desk just once, and that was when I was leaving. Let's have a look at that. Hello there. Isn't this the way it should be? Now, I've always wanted to read the audio cue. Now, today marks no, the no, end no. of an era. <laughs> okay, that's enough. That's that my line. Thank you very much. How about you, Mel? Very well done. After more than two years with Sunrise, our beloved production, who wrote beloved? Right, production oh, coordinator, yeah. Robbo, right, yeah. is, is leaving. Is that your title? Yeah, Aww. that is my title, Koshy. <laughs> <laughs> oh. How does it How do you just look exactly the same and just as young? But no, it was a pretty fantastic time. I loved it that you, you came to us and you were as green as, as we all were. I think that was the beauty in those days, wasn't it, with the show that we all... Yeah kind of made it up together as we went along. Yeah, we really did. Uh, I'll tell you right now, I'm not the same. Uh, this desk hides a lot. I'll tell you right now, Melissa Doyle. <laughs> um, but there was one moment uh, where it, I, I still feel a little bit bad about this and feel a little bit, little, a little bit weird. It just happened. Uh, let's take a look. Somewhere, someone will see my potential and I'll become a star. What possessed you to try it out? Well, so you know that I'd do anything to get into TV. I'm even getting into bed with you, which is not unlike anything in the TV industry or so I've heard. Tissues. Robert, we've baked a cake. Oh, oh, Brett, thank you. Your favourite. Oh, it is my favourite too. Oh, so uh, we love sorry, we love <laughs> but I've got to tell you, I remember going off after doing that, and I went to Adam Boland, who was the executive producer at the time. Yeah. I said, "Oh no, I've just done something really bad." And he goes, "What?" I said, I, "I've just like I, I've hugged Mel and I kept 
that kept hugging her and kept hugging her and threw a bear away and kept hugging her. And he goes, oh, well, if you want to apologize, I apologize to you. You were lovely. You were wonderful. <laughs> but it's still something where I think about like, oh, my goodness, I, you know, I was touching a national treasure uh, and I, I felt bad about it. So I'm glad that we, we, are we cool, Mel? Are we cool? You can hug me anytime. That's why I'm here today. I feel like we just bonded. So I think once you're in, in bed together hugging, then, you know, there's just no way. <laughs> But don't you look back, oh I think the thing that we loved the most about um, doing Sunrise is anything could happen. And there were so many times when things did and people would say things or there'd be sort of, you know, moments in interviews and someone would swear or something would go haywire. But I think that was the beauty of it. You know, there's nothing, as you know better than anyone, there's nothing like live television for, for what can go right and what can go wrong. It, it is so much fun, and we and obviously we're, we're going to move on from my connection with you. But I I couldn't help, and I'm being a bit of a fanboy at the moment. But we've been shopping in LA at, at discount stores. We've been having dinner at a weird pub in Davenport in Tasmania. We've had a lot of good time, so I really appreciate that. And that was my first ever foray into television, something that I've wanted to do forever. So it was lovely to have done it with you. Now you spent um, eleven years at Sunrise. Was it hard to say goodbye? Oh, I had the most extraordinary time. It was, I feel so lucky that I got to work on a program such as Sunrise with the people that I worked with, that we got to build something to what you watch today and, and, and to be mm. part of anything, to grow anything, whether it be a television program, whether it be a, a business, it doesn't matter what it is. I think it's a really unique opportunity. So it was a wonderful thing that I, I have nothing but fond memories of. But I think it's really important to keep evolving and changing and learning. You know, I'm one of those people that um, I'll go, if I'm, if I'm traveling, I want to go somewhere that I don't know anything about the place. I, I can't speak the language. I don't know about the food. The less I know about it, the more excited I am. So I, I'm one of those people that I want to keep learning forever. The day that I rock up to a job and do something and think, first of all, that I know how to do it or that it feels like I've done it before. It, that's just, I need more. So I think change is really, really important. So I've, I've been grateful for every single opportunity that I've had along the way. And I like it that I can keep doing new things. And we're bloody well very grateful that you can keep doing those things because it means we can keep seeing you on the telly. Uh, now, I've got to ask you, you've covered so many different things over a massive and wonderful career that's still going, of course. Uh, but what what's one story that, that's really made an impact on you that stayed with you? Yeah, I'm, it's a little hard, I think, to pick one, but I would say mm. the stories that have touched me emotionally have been the ones that have had the biggest impact. So um, things where I've stood somewhere at a moment in time that I know is making history, whether it's the, uh, you know, the inauguration mm. of President Obama or um, the election of Pope Francis, you know, moments in time like that are really quite extraordinary, standing on the Oscars red carpet. But the ones that have stayed within my soul are ones that I've been emotionally attached to. So I think Black Saturday bushfires is something that I will hold within me forever to see the people and what they went through. That was extraordinary. Um, there's no doubt covering the Link siege in, in the Link Cafe siege in Sydney. That was one of those moments in time where, you know, you just, you know, you, you're at a, some stories just really touch you deeply. And it's, it's really hard to just walk away and move on to the next and not have them deep within you forever how they affect you. Well, there's such a responsibility. Yeah, you, you've spoken about the responsibility before about, especially with, say, for the Sydney siege when you were covering that, you said, uh, you know, you didn't want to give too much information away about the police operation, about what was happening outside, but you also had to balance that with the fact that the whole nation, rightly so, was watching you wanting to find information. You've got to make some pretty split-second decisions uh, on live TV. How is that done? And, and is that hard to do? What's that experience for you? I think for me, it was err on the side of caution. And you know, it's funny, I think you get to a point in your job, whatever it might be, that you feel that you've had a degree of experience and it brings you to that moment. Um, you know, that was one of those, I was so aware that my children were at home watching and mum was standing, you know, a couple of hundred metres around the corner. And then I kept thinking, imagine if the television was on in the cafe and Manmonis was able to see what was going on outside. And, you know, clearly we could see a lot of emergency vehicles and knew what was going on, but I thought I can't, we can't give any 
information away. And then I just kept thinking of the families of those who were being held and they would be glued to the television for information. So it was one of those situations where I was very conscious that it wasn't a time for sensationalising, it wasn't a time for drama or, you know, making something bigger than it was because it was huge, it was frightening. There's no doubt we were all scared. So, yeah, you weigh those up at the moment and um, and I, I hope we treated it responsibly and and with the you know the dignity that we were very mindful of who was watching but it was um yeah no doubt very very scary but you know i think of the people that were in there more scary mm. for them than any, anyone outside experienced but yeah really a really big moment in time for us as a country but i generally think though that to have someone as compassionate and you know i'm not just you know blowing smoke but as compassionate and genuinely caring as you are i think that that makes the broadcast very different from anyone else in the country. So I think we're very lucky to have you at, at, at stories like the ones that you've mentioned, as well as The Siege. Uh, so I, I think that's amazing. I, I really do take my hat off to you. You really are one of our greatest broadcasters. Um, being one of our greatest broadcasters means that you've got a, a news theme. Sorry, what's that, Mel? Sorry. I feel like I'm about to retire or die. It's very sweet. Oh, no, no, please. No, please, please. This is... No, no, this is just me, like, getting all this out that I've had this love for you for, the, for so long. Um, really quickly, you've, you've heard the Seven News theme, that very familiar theme, The yeah. Mission, by John Williams. Do you ever find yourself, or did you ever find yourself humming it? Just, like, <laughs> while you were washing the dishes, or... Because it's no, in you, or do you just... Can you ignore it? No, I don't ignore it. Do you know what's funny? It's one of those moments where... So, you're on... You're about to do live telly. You're sitting on the set, everything's, you know, your hair and makeup's all been fixed and foofed and the lights are on and everyone's ready to go. And it's that moment of the opener rolling that that is what snaps you into action. And you've done yeah. it. Live television is quite an extraordinary thing. You have that moment where, you know, a lot of people know there's delay in radio, um, you know, a seven second delay button, but there's nothing. Television is live. So if you make a mistake or you stuff up or something goes wrong, then there's no taking it back. So. It's almost that moment of going, bang, all right, here we go, this is it. And it's an exciting moment. I, I get that, still I get that sense of um, that thrill of here we go, this is live and I've got a bulletin to present and there's people at home, whether they be cooking their dinner or whatever they might be doing, that want to know what happened in the world and I'm about to tell them. And it's, 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 I keep using the word privilege, but it really is. It's an extraordinary privilege to do it. But, yeah, for me that's what that that split second of the opener rolling and the sound of it does, where I'm like, okay, here we go. Let's do it. Time to go. Uh, Mel Doyle, this has been so lovely. Thank you so much for saying that you would do this and for spending your time. Uh, it, it's been a real thrill. It's great for our show, but really for personally, it's it's great for me. You, you are literally have been one of my heroes since the beginning of my TV career. You are the sweetest, most loveliest person. Uh, we really appreciate it. And from the bottom of, bottom of my heart, uh, thank you for doing this. It was great chatting with you. Thank you for inviting me on and well done to you. I, I feel a little maternal, but I see what you've done and I'm I'm really proud of you. So, uh, yay. Go you. Thanks, Robert. Thank you, Mel. Thank you. It's the Ben, Rob and Robbo. Ben, Rob and Robbo. Ben, Rob and Robbo.